Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Dark Pits faction event and showing you a few teams to use with this. We'll start from the easy quick ones, which just make it an absolute breeze at the early stages. And I'll show you how you should actually upgrade the team to make things quicker and more efficient as we go along. What I always recommend with these is you go to the shop and grab tier one straight away. It gives you a potion of enchantment, really handy. All your troops are going to start enchanted at the start of every single battle. Really, really handy. There is a weapon further down on tier four, a pit knife. Deals damage to the last enemy, then curses and drains all the mana from them. Right, so I'll just show a team I set up for this in my troops stage, because I can only show one team at a time. It's not elf anymore, I've changed this. This is actually a really simple team to uh, set up. We've got Forest Troll in first place. Doubles the number of green on the board, then adds three green gems, so lots of green. And these are very handy in first place as well. Inflicts Entangle when doing Skull damage. And as decent bark skin reduces damage from skulls by 33% as well. This is wrong actually, I'll need to change that. King Gobtruffle times two, because Gob Truffle, uh, Forest Troll is going to give Gobtruffle lots of um, his colour. And charge him up nice and fast. And the weapon, we don't actually want that. We want the Arboreal Crystal, because that explodes a load of green gems, which is good for Gobtruffle again. And the explosion from that green is going to pick up other colours at the same time. And it gives a status effect to all elemental allies, which we all are, and summons an elemental too. So we're all elemental, but you may think that that means elemental is the best class to be in. But it's not. The best class for this is actually going to be Titan. And the reason is, Forest Troll being a giant, he's going to gain a plus 50% start to his mana at the same time, which is super handy. All giant allies start with 50% mana. So the hero with Arboreal Crystal and Forest Troll are going to start with 50%. And we want Impact, Counter-Attack, uh, yeah, Stone Circle. None, none of these are actually relevant. You don't actually want a Dust Storm at the start because that's going to cover up green. You don't want that. You want actually green and blue more than brown. So we'll just go Blood and Glory. Rock Solid is handy. Lightning Strike is good for gaining extra mana. As is Fortitude a very good trait as well. Immune to Stun, Poison, Disease, Death, Mark, Lycanthropy and Devour. So that's one way you can go about it. If you've got um, Queen Gobtruffle. Queen Gobtruffle? Who's she? That's, that would be an awesome mix, wouldn't it? King Gobtruffle mixed with Queen Beatrix. Oh my god, that'd be fantastic. Anyway. If you've got Queen Beatrix, it would prefer that instead because there was a cleanser as well, which is superb. You can throw two of her in instead. Um, really handy. She does really good damage. Has those independent 40% chances to gain an extra turn and half her mana back. And obviously that great. Royal Honey. Cleanse all allies when matching four or more gems. But the same theory applies. You're going to try and get Forest Troll charged up, cast that, and charge up what will be now the two Queen Beatrixes. And that still works. So um, that'd be a good way to go with that with Queen Beatrix if you preferred that. And the cool thing about these is as well, as you go on through the delve, if you get a long way, you can eventually change one of the troops further down. Or if you're brave, you can put him in first place and stick an old hiking iron gut if you have him. He uh, deals damage to an enemy with a chance to devour them equal to his attack and gains an extra turn. You can boost his attack if you go to your medals and you put on the Medal of Seasons or the one, whichever one you've got, which gives plus four attack. You just put three of them on, boost his attack as high as you can and you get that extra chance of getting that Devour. But that's not the team I'm going to go with right now. The team I'm going to go with at the minute is going to be a Elven-based team. And it is... We'll go with uh, King Avalon times two, Emerald Blade and Tiri. We're in Archer class. The benefit of King Avalon is all elf allies start with 50% mana. And his spell is to deal damage to all enemies. So the early stages of this uh, delve, we're going to be wiping them out in single cast. Boosted by elf, elemental and beast allies and summon a Forest of Thorns troop as well. But it's just the damage we're interested in right now. We've got two of them. They're going to start with 50% obviously. Got Emerald Blade. This is in the Elven class as well, so we're going to get 50% on this as well. 
explodes a load of purple gems, grants a random status effect to all silver glade allies, we don't care about that part of the spell, and adds a summon as well should we need it. Good traits in the elven class or um, what, do you, what do you call it? What's it called? Archer. Oh, like 15% chance for skull damage to be lethal and start battles with 50% mana, which we have anyway. But on the champion talents, we've got Hunt, Precision, Root Trap, Nature's Aura, really good to have a Leaf Storm at the start, Wall of Vines, Elven Sentries, Strix Commander, doesn't matter. That level 101, there was literally nothing there which was irrelevant. But, um, so pick whatever, whichever one of them you fancy. And... This works good because basically we'll be looking for green and blue straight away but if we don't get any green and blue to start with we can grab purple if it's there for Tiri. She's going to start with half mana as well. She's only going to require four to get charged up and she's going to destroy a load of gems of a chosen colour. So we can select green to, to get rid of or blue. So she'll charge up the other teams, the other members of the team really quickly. And failing that, we can um, explode a load of purple gems with Emerald Blade and fill up everybody, hopefully. On the banner side of things, I've just gone for a plus two green, plus one blue, minus one brown. So, um, and the good thing about this team is as well, if you get well into it and you've got the uh, troop, Arachnian Weaver, as things get tougher, you can chuck Arachnian Weaver in, in place of Tyri. Rackney Weaver would do a superb job, webs all enemies and deals a load of true damage to the last two, and if one of them dies, explode 15 gems, and he also has a summon. So, basically, with him and the team there, everyone has a summon, literally. Four troops with a summon, that is particularly awesome. So, Arachne and Weaver for the later stages, as you start to um, find it more difficult, or not difficult, just more time-consuming, because you may have to start casting these two or three times, and that's when you want to start bringing in Arachnian Weaver if you can. Right, so I've done the first one already. It was just a straightforward case of casting um, Avalon as fast as possible. So we start with 50%. We're enchanted to. As soon as we get green, one of them is going to be charged up. We can cast Avalon and it is done. And Tiri was ready to go as, as well then. So if, if we didn't get any mana be required by matches, we can just cast Tiri and select the colour which we want to, to gain. On this one, it's a really quick shortcut. You start in the middle, you can just go straight across the middle if you want. Straight to the Mythic Room. You do have to do the Legendary Room first. Or alternatively, you can go around one of the edges. Or like that. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be jumping straight across. And we'll do the Legendary Room next. Again, looking for green straight away. That's always handy though, you can't really go wrong with that, we're getting purple at the same time. Cast one, and that was enough. Obviously depending on, on your magic level, and your level in the game, it will vary upon how much something like your King Avalon does. You may have to cast him a couple of times, where I've only got to cast him once, but the theory will still be exactly the same. No green, so we grab blue. There's a few lingerers. We can now... We're, we're going to get this um, charged up next time anyway, this second King Avalon. But it just shows how with this you can choose Tiri. You go, I'll have some more of them, thanks. And get more. Oh, we can do damage. That was actually a bit of a waste what I just done then on that cast. I didn't look what I was actually selecting properly. Because that's a thing to remember. Even though the second troop had fif uh, 15, I think it was, that had required mana. Because he's in second place, it's the first troop that will get first dibs on that mana colour. So that is one thing to remember when doing that. It's often better to just wait an extra round sometimes. So I'll try and show it on this, on this fight if we'll get the opportunity. Maybe killing them outright, we'll have to see. Yeah, should be okay on the next one, we'll go to the legendary room. Web spinner, 
Really good treat, but it should really be at the top. Does excellent damage when it's at the top. Grab some blue. Right, this is what I'm saying. Like, um, if you cast this one now, we're not going to kill them straight away. But what would have... Now we can collect blue again, look. But the thing is, what would have been better idea would be not to have actually cast that one right away. Let's grab this anyway. Because um, with that one ready to go and charged, you could have grabbed the blue and then that would have ensured that this one, the second Avalon, was charged at the same time. So on games where you need to cast these twice, then um, it is sometimes better to actually just be patient, wait one more round. See, that hasn't charged the second one at all. You had to, had to wait. But um, if I'd have done that, waited the first time round, then that one would have been charged one round faster. I'll try and show it now on this mythic room, exactly what I mean. This hopefully should be the right way to do it. Only saves a round, but a round saved here, a round saved there. Makes a difference, all makes it a little bit quicker. Right, so they're going to be enchanted now, and they're going to be charged up next round anyway, just the way the mana gems uh, drop, so it's not going to make a difference. But say they were still on 10 mana out of 16, they're not going to be charged the next round. Um, and if we cast this one now, any mana we get goes on the first troop, and we still have to wait for this one. By literally just getting this one now, or waiting that one more round, we've got two of these charged, we can cast them back to back without any delay at all. And that is just that little bit faster. And then we've got the, both weapons at the bottom ready to cast to, to charge them up again. So we'll see if this gets more difficult. Let's claim rewards. Rewards go there, you grab them as you go along. Grab extra tears if you're enjoying it and want to go further. So as they get more, more powerful, you can um, just bring in good old Arachnian Weaver if you have that troop. Really, really good troop. So it's still at a stage now where I can just cast two Avalorns, one after the other. But when it gets to beyond that stage, that's when I'll be thinking about bringing in Arachnian Weaver maybe. There's no need to do it quick like this, by the way. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. You, you get the room chest, uh, the room a treasure multiplier will go up if you do, if you take more time to do the um, surrounding rooms first, and you will get better rewards because of that. It's definitely worth doing if you've got the time. I'm literally just doing the shortcut method speed and sake of the video so now we're at the stage where we're gonna have to get these charged up again which is where the other two troops come in handy you know nope, wrong i thought we're gonna have to do an extra charge then but that's where tiri comes in handy and so does that weapon it just charges them both up again really really fast hopefully we'll show that now on the next room so I'll try and do it nice and quickly now got a nice blue to start with they're both ready. Back to back casts and done. Looks like if you don't have King Avalorn, but you do have something like King, King Gobtruffle or Beatrix, then the other team I showed at the beginning will work an absolute treat as well. Really, really fast. No blue, no green, so we grab purple for Cherry. Then we'll just get rid of whatever is the most relevant colour. Blue looks like there's more of them. Now we can cast these.
Always handy to have a sort of backup mana generator when the game's not giving you the colours which you require, which is going to happen from time to time. So now we're going to have to use our mana generators properly because these two casts are not going to wipe out the opponent. So now we can either do this, explode 58 purple gems. Obviously Tiri is the only one who uses purple. Um, there's quite a few purple there, so we're going to get a lot of green from that, but this is far more efficient to cast Tiri because you can grab literally whichever colour you want. There's a bunch of green there. I'll grab them. got 11 there straight away and a drop. And that gave us the extra ones which we needed. Alright, so um, that's how you do it with that team. They're quite enjoyable to use. Shan't drag it out any further. But if you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And most of all, thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.